So it's been about a month since Samsung released its newest flagship devices, the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus, which are obviously the competitor phones to Apple's iPhone XS and XS Max. With these new devices, Samsung did bring a lot of new features and really revamped their S series devices. But also like Apple, Samsung did introduce a third device, the Galaxy S10e. This one having a few less features than its bigger brother while also being a direct competitor to the iPhone XR with both devices coming in at a $750 price point for both models. With that being said, I've been using the Galaxy S10e as my daily driver for a few weeks now and I gotta say guys, this is easily one of Samsung's best devices. So starting with the design, again, Samsung really revamped the S series with these new devices, but really it's the S10e that has the biggest design change in my opinion. Now, yes, this is the smallest Galaxy device out of the three, measuring in at 5.8 inches, but also this is the only device out of the three that has a completely flat display. And this is something that Samsung really hasn't done since the Galaxy S7, and I am personally glad that they made this change. I was never really a fan of the curved displays, so it's really great to have a flat screen on a Galaxy phone again. Now speaking of the screen, this is a 5.8 inch Full HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED Infinity O display with a resolution of 2280 by 1080 p which comes up to about 438 pixels per inch. Now the resolution on here isn't going to be as good as its bigger brothers, both of those have a resolution of 3040 by 1440 but still the S10e has a very bright and beautiful display with great colors and really good detail. And all of that together makes for a very satisfying video and movie watching experience and thanks to that small camera cutout that Samsung embedded into the display we have hardly any bezel making this a full corner to corner experience. Now on the topic of that camera cutout, I know this is something that a lot of people don't really like about these newer Galaxy devices, but it's personally something that I don't mind at all. In fact, I prefer this type of look over the traditional notch that most phones are going for. And again, the display here is really great. Samsung is known for making some of the best looking displays on any smartphone, and they definitely did not disappoint with this one. And somewhere else they didn't disappoint in is the speakers found on this phone. So like previous models, the S10e does have a bottom facing speaker, as well as taking advantage of the headset up top, giving sort of a surround sound effect, which sounds really great, especially when watching videos and movies. This speaker gets really loud and has some really great clarity, but it does come with the downside of getting a bit tinny at higher volumes. Now, if you're an audiophile and would rather plug in some headphones, you'll be glad to know that Samsung is still giving us a headphone jack. And on top of that, we do also have Dolby Atmos support, which also adds to better sound. As for the rest of the design, we still have a very similar button layout to previous Samsung devices by having the volume up and down buttons on the left of the device, as well as our dedicated Bixby button, which now finally has the option of being remappable. So you can set any app or program to open up by pressing the Bixby button. However, you're still not able to open up any voice assistance on here, which really sucks, but eh, it's better than nothing. Now, one of the biggest differences between the S10e and its bigger brothers is that we do not have the fingerprint scanner embedded into the display. What we have instead is a traditional fingerprint reader over on the right hand side of the phone. And this is truly a great fingerprint scanner. I think that the placement for it is perfect and it works extremely fast and is also very accurate. And if you'd rather use your face to unlock the phone, you'd be glad to know that we do also have facial recognition on here, which also works very great and is very accurate. And finishing up the tour of the phone over on the back, we do have our dual camera setup, which I'll talk about later on in the video. And also here on the back, we do have an all glass back, which of course gives us the option to not only wirelessly charge the phone, but also reverse charge to other devices. This is a new feature that Samsung brought to its Galaxy devices. And while it sounds cool and all, it's really not all that. Um, it works great and I haven't had any issues with the reverse charging on this phone, but the downside is that you do have to constantly have contact with both devices and the reverse charging is pretty slow so it's not really something I see myself using too often. Lastly this phone is also rated IPS 68 water and dust resistant. 
Moving over to the hardware side of this phone, although the S10e is the most cost efficient model out of the three phones, it still has the same hardware on the inside. So what we have here is a Snapdragon 855 and you can choose between 6GB of RAM with 128GB of storage or 8GB of RAM with 256GB of storage, of course both with the option to expand that via microSD. On top of that, this phone is also running on the latest version of Android, and wow, really guys, this is a very, very fast phone. Uh, we're really getting to that time where lag is not something you'll commonly see on a flagship device. I mean, this phone is really fast when opening up apps and multitasking and just when playing games, uh, which really makes this a very, very satisfying phone to use. And of course with usage comes the battery life of the phone and the S10e is powered by a 3100 milliamp hour battery which isn't really all that much but I was definitely able to get a full day usage out of this phone. And again as I mentioned earlier we do have wireless charging and reverse charging options on this device. And finally, let's go back to those cameras found on this phone. So starting with the back cameras here, we do have two different lenses with different focal lengths, which is something you'll find on most flagship devices these days. So for the primary shooter, we have a standard 12 megapixel wide angle camera with optical image stabilization. And this camera is set at a field of view of 77 degrees and has dual aperture of f1.5 and f2.4. And for the secondary shooter, we have a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera with a field of view of 123 degrees, which is perfect for group photos and landscape photography. And the photos that these cameras produce are really great in my opinion. They offer really great detail, are very vibrant, and are overall really sharp. And low lighting photos were surprisingly really good with the primary shooter. I did some comparisons between the iPhone XR's camera and the S10e's camera, and the S10e definitely did a a much better job with darker scenes and let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a camera comparison video between the iPhone 10R and the Galaxy S10e uh, that's something I'm thinking about doing but yeah let me know if that's something that you guys want to see now going back to the cameras, we do have 4K UHD video recording options with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. And as you can expect, the video quality on this phone is extremely good. And finally, the single front facing camera is a 10 megapixel shooter with an f1.9 aperture and this front facing camera does have the option to shoot in live focus mode so you can blur out that background and take some really great selfies. So in the end, with everything considered, the S10e really comes with the whole package. You get a great display, fast speeds, a ton of storage, good battery life, and some really great cameras. I mean, there's really nothing on this phone that I can complain about, especially considering the price of it. Again, this is a $750 phone, which gives you a whole lot for your money. So if you're thinking about getting a new Galaxy device, but don't want to necessarily spend $800 plus, then you should really consider looking into the Galaxy Galaxy S10e because I highly recommend it. So that's going to wrap up this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in more video and photo samples from this phone, I will be dropping another video on that soon. And again, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a comparison video between the S10e and the iPhone XR. Um, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.